Welcome to the Secrets to Mindful Health podcast. I am your host, Beth Warren. Today, we're going to speak about how to mindfully treat yourself. My topic's actually called, I can't have that piece of cake or I'll eat the whole thing. If this sounds familiar to you, then listen up because I'm going to give you tips on how to treat yourself in a way that you feel completely mindful and in control and good about that indulgence. Because the reality is you're going to have a piece of cake in your life. And even if you're chuckling and like, you're like, yeah, but I'm not a cake person. I hear that from some people too. I don't only just mean cake. Okay. So feel free to put in whatever word or whatever food you find quote unquote triggering or challenging for you in that space. But the point is going to be the same that in life, you're going to have things that are non diet foods. And I'm saying that in a way that's cringeworthy because I hate the entire concept of quote unquote diet foods. If people know me, they know that's my pet peeve. I don't feel you should eat something and substitute a habit or craving um, without getting to the root cause of it because you think it's something that's better for you. You first have to recognize that there's two parts of you. There's your body and there's your brain and they both need to communicate with each other. And your body doesn't speak feelings. It feels feelings. So you can't deny your wants and desires and try to substitute it with something that you think in your brain feels better when your body's like, but I don't feel it. I'm not feeling this. So you have to sync the two. And that's my first point is that in order to start off mindfully treating yourself, it's what I always say in basically every talk I give that you have to accept yourself and be honest with yourself first. And that's hard for a lot of people to do. And I've had many podcasts look at the ones on emotional eating and other topics like that about how to be honest with yourself and come from a place of self-love and acceptance in order to help yourself more. This isn't about shaming. Uh, So you have to acknowledge that you like a piece of cake. That's not a bad thing. That's also not, not normal. And in your life, you're going to have to be able to be around cake without feeling like you lose control and you eat the whole thing. If this sounds familiar to you when you're at, let's say, a dessert table after a family meal, you guys put out a dessert of a cake and you say, "Okay, I'm only going to have one piece. Oh, no. First, you say, I'm actually not going to have any. Right. I think that's mistake. Number one, be be real and be honest. If you love cake, don't ever go into a situation thinking you're doing something better for yourself by saying I'm not having any. That's famous last words. Okay, so you should always come in with a little bit of flexibility and wiggle room for yourself, knowing yourself and honoring yourself, accepting yourself and loving yourself. I always think of it like with kids because I have six kids. That you grab a lollipop in your pocket when you're going to hear a speaker that you have to bring a child to, you're not going in there saying, okay, I'm not, she's just going to be good. I'm not giving her anything. Like we're all going to be honest parents here and either bring a toy or bring a lolly. And that's a dietitian saying that because you want to be realistic with the child in front of you. And okay, great. You might not have to use the lolly. They might be an angel child, but 90% sure that they won't be. And then you, that's okay. You just whip out the lolly and all's good again. So to go in and say, I'm not going to have any cake, it's a slippery slope because if you didn't bring that lolly for the child, they're going to have a tantrum on the floor. And you're like, if I only just bought, brought a lolly, this will all have ended very differently. So your cake is your lolly, or maybe you like a lolly, but you want to go in there realistically because you could come out of it in a much better place than not having been realistic. And then what unfolds? I want you guys to take that in because I know that makes so much sense, right? I always say I leave a 
I lead from a place of sensibility and logic. That is the key to sustainable results. Things should make sense when I speak to you. You should be like, oh, yeah, it totally makes sense. Great. Okay. So we're going to go in there realistic, accepting yourself and honoring yourself in front of that piece of cake. So if you find yourself saying, I'm not having any, what typically happens that I literally see in front of me, not that I'm watching you, it's just in front of me, you start sort of forking pieces from the cake in middle of the table, like, like it's better, right? Like if you didn't just put one piece on your plate, it, it would be better, right? So you're actually kind of doing something a little strange and, and forking pieces or taking nibs off the ends of it instead of just having a piece. So I have other talks about help. I'm not a garbage can, Go look at that podcast where I discuss that when you actually just take the piece of cake or sit with a plate, it's a lot, not only more mindful, you actually typically eat less because it's also a habit. It means you're doing it in other areas. So I much rather you be honest. Step one, accept yourself. Just tell yourself I am going to have a piece of cake if I want it and then just take a piece and eat it because just sort of grabbing little forkfuls from the middle without having your own plate or picking on it or kind of manipulating yourself by cleaning the table and then in the kitchen picking on it is let what are you doing you know let's not be manipulative let's actually be honest here uh i did want to bring in the comment i mentioned earlier about the diet foods or the diet cookies or the diet cakes so clients know that I group that category in the same category as any treat. You don't get extra points or whatever these things are because you had a cookie that was a quote unquote diet cookie. I don't care how many calories was in it. I don't care if there was less, some new invention of a product in there that's less calories or good for keto or whatever it is. I want you to be honest that you're looking for a cookie to fulfill a craving that is okay and normal to satisfy. Therefore, when mindfully choosing a food, that means making a decision and choice about the honest assessment of what you want it for, which is satisfying a craving. And then therefore choosing the food that satisfies the craving. Don't tell me that diet cookie that likely tastes like garbage, except you convince yourself it tastes good, is satisfying that uh, of a craving. Typically what it does is because it distracted the craving or attempted to satisfy it, but did not, it actually triggers it even more. So what you either do is eat 10 of those diet cookies because it's not really hitting that satisfaction point because it's likely missing the fat or something that actually satisfies you from a physiological standpoint, or you eat those diet cookies and then end up eating the cake that was left out on the table anyway. So again, we are going to be step one, accepting and honest with ourselves because otherwise you're just manipulating yourself, you're self-sabotaging yourself. And that is the negative spiral that I always help people work against because actually satisfying cravings and weight management and all these weight specific successes is not from that negative place, shaming, hiding, manipulating place. It's from a very loving, accepting place. So that is where that diet conversation uh, comes in. Also, reality is the diet foods make you feel in your brain or make you think, sorry, we already distinguished between feeling and thinking, makes you think that you're allowed, quote unquote, I hate that word, allowed, not allowed. Look, you're an adult, right? Listening to this, even kids, you have a choice and you're allowed to make your choices. Okay. There's no allowed, not allowed. This is not a policeman. Okay. You could eat whatever the heck you want. No one's telling you not to, and there's no reason why you can't, but you think that you're allowed to eat more because it's a diet food. And then because it becomes a brain thought, not a physical body feeling, you therefore eat more because you're completely disassociated from your brain thought and your body's feelings because your brain is telling you, oh, body, look, we're allowed to eat more. Like, come over here. I'm going to have more. And your body's feeling like, what the heck is this? This is not doing it for me. And that disassociated feeling 
is the opposite of what you need for sustainable results. You're looking to embark on your wellness and weight journeys in a way that you're getting to know yourself and realigning your mind with your body. So you could intuitively feel what you want and that helps you manage your weight. And you can always make a decision when to be a little bit more focused and uh, have more guidelines to lose a little bit, or you could loosen up because you're in a good place and you just want to, you know, be a little flexible on a vacation, whatever it is. But that all boils down to the mind body connection and these diet foods and things like that are bringing you further away from that goal because it's separating your mind from your body. Your mind is trying to convince your body. Hey, look over here. This is a good idea. These are diet cookies. This is going to do it for you. And your body's like, Hey, this does not do it for me. This does not taste like my chocolate cake. This does not, this pillow cloud cookie is not, is not a cookie. Okay. So stop trying to convince me because I'm not feeling it. Okay. So that's the issue of the whole diet thing and being honest with yourself when it's coming to treat yourself, like you really need to be honest. And then you need to find the food that actually satisfies the feeling in your body, not what your brain is telling you should satisfy the feeling in your body. Okay. Moving on. Step two. I know eye roll, right? We talk about the eye roll moments, but I have to say them because we need the reminders basically in every podcast because the foundational principles are always the foundation for any of this learning of the balance, right? That's what we're talking about. That's what I'm known for. That's what I live. And that's what I realize people are missing in my over 13 years of private practice is that we have no idea what balance means. So how can we get to a balanced place? So we have to first build a foundation and that's the eye roll moments. I call them because they're obvious yet. We're not doing it because we're underestimating it or we feel like our issues are so overwhelming that it can't just be this simple, whatever step it is. And this step is about being satisfied and never finding yourself starving. Those are actually two different points. Never being starving means you're eating about every three hours. You're not allowing your cortisol or your stress hormone to drop too low and then spike up high. You're looking to keep those cravings at bay. And that's by keeping the cortisol stress hormone in a steady peaks and dips versus a spike and a, and a deep drop or a continuous upward um, spiral. That also means uh, balancing your blood sugar. It, it's just so many factors that hit the nail on the head. I call it like bowling where you hit one pin and it hits the rest of the pins down. That is the feeling of balancing your blood sugar eating every few hours. So that's why I stress that concept to people because it helps so many things just focusing on that one thing. But the satisfied, I said to be, not be starving and be satisfied. Satisfied always puts in my brain uh, the protein concept that you want to have proteins, uh, in, in your day, adequate quality proteins that do it for you in order to feel satisfied. So carbohydrates are a food group that fills you proteins, food group that satisfies you. If you're missing protein in your day to the extent that you need, you don't have to overdo protein and you don't have to only do protein. If you don't have substantial protein or adequate protein for your needs, that's the feeling like you're looking for something. I had lunch, Beth, but now I'm looking for something sweet or you go to the night and you're like looking for something, you know, you're not hungry, but you're looking for something. And again, I spoke to the, spoke about this in my other podcast, let's say related to emotional eating, where you really do have to satisfy that piece um, in your gut. It, your gut talks to your brain. And if it's missing, it's going to start looking for something and you're going to have to be crazy intuitive to recognize what that missing piece is. So I had to bring that up because that's one of the foundational principles. So that was step two. Step three is what I call as my favorite always brings a smile to my face, create memorable food experiences. I want that everywhere. I can't find anyone that's coined that phrase, but me because when I was saying that I realized that I'm about the balance and people come to me ultimately to learn the balance, they see that I know how to indulge. I go out with friends. I don't feel restricted, but I feel mindful. I feel fully present. I feel not guilty at all if there's foods that are not a salad that I'm eating, but I likely will also have a salad. I don't find those two things mutually exclusive. They're inclusive. And that is something that I had to figure out, how did I develop that? Because that's something that's always been a part of me. I used to go, I speak about this in my book, Secrets of a Kosher Girl, which is still available on Amazon or through my website. I speak about how I used to go 
exercise with my father to bond with him after school. He used to love those 24 hour fitness places. He used to go in his regular work clothes, take off his button down shirt, have his undershirt and in the Jewish religion, a seat seat on and work out in the gym just like that, because that's when he got it in. And I found that to bond with him, I need to go exercise. So I used to always be active, although I didn't always eat completely balanced. I didn't know what that meant at the time. And after our workouts, we used to go for a Slurpee at 7-Eleven. And I thought that was completely normal. So looking back, it's like, okay, a lot of people would say, you just went to go exercise. Why did you waste your calories and have a Slurpee? I actually had a great experience. And it has such a smile on my face about the concept of working out. I have really good memories about exercise. And that memory and that feeling is way more important than the 150, 300, whatever that was, calories the Slurpee did in those moments, because it's about the long-term goals, not just the short-term goals. And that's why I call these things, create memorable food experiences that whenever you are going to indulge, whether planned or not planned, you want to make the experience as memorable and positive as possible. Another nice memory I have regarding that, that I did an Instagram post at Beth underscore Warren. I did a post at the time. This is back when Instagram was just a photo and you had to have this long caption and story, which I love that storytelling component that I missed. But now at least I have my podcast to speak a lot. I had a picture where my six children and I were lined up seated at Disney World in Orlando, Florida, and we all had our Mickey Mouse ice cream. It's in the shape of the Mickey Mouse and we were holding it sitting down and we had a kind of that diagonal shot where you saw like seven Mickey Mouse ice creams. And my post was about creating memorable food experiences that I will never. And I'm speaking about this. I think this is at least six years later with a smile, remembering that moment of us all sitting there enjoying this Mickey Mouse ice cream. And I always even instill that in kids that I work with in counseling, but also with my kids, it's not only normal to have ice cream, you want your kids to have an ice cream once in a while. Like you want your kids to be quote unquote normal. When, when parents speak to me in angst about going to a party or a buffet or a social situation or a family dinner and there's a dessert table, they're like, and they feel like they need to eat the whole thing and they're making a plate with tons of desserts and they're getting all anxious about the facts that that kids want all the desserts on the table. And I said, do you really want your child to sit there in front of a table of a million desserts and not want any? Do we feel that that would be normal that you are? I would think there was something wrong if someone could sit in front of a massive dessert table and say, I don't want any. I'll be like, huh? Why? What's going on there? Okay. So you want to feel like it's very normalized to be like, oh, we're having fun. And and this is the only kosher item in Disney World because I keep kosher and we're going to have an ice cream. We're going to enjoy ourselves because we're doing it anyway. So let's maximize the enjoyment. Maximizing the enjoyment and the positivity, guys, is what helps you satisfy and control the craving to be more mindful. That's the point here. So clients know from me that if I am, if people need, clients need more structure around that, I understand it. It's very hard. And this is why I don't call myself intuitive eating coach, whatever. Of course, I work with intuition. That's what I'm known for. But I found the movement is another extreme that I'm very cautious about because I do feel, first of all, I don't shame the concept of weight loss. I think it's all about intention and you can't deny someone's desires in order, even if it's about looks, it's a valid feeling. And as long as the intention and the place of self-love is there, I'm very for it. And I help people do it in a healthy way, a balanced way and sustainable. But with intuition, I want people to feel like they can get to a place where they could have have some sort of structure around it. So in the beginning, I understand there's handholding involved. And that's why people come to me. Obviously, in the beginning, it does sound more diet like in the concept that we teach structure routine to help you then feel confident in those moments. So one thing I teach is if you do want to have, let's say, a weight loss strategy, but like I always say, you know, you still need to learn how to eat a piece of cake. You can fit it in, meaning be mindful about it. You can tell yourself something like once a week, I'm going to have a treat 
and I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to create the whole experience so I can actually truly enjoy it and move on. A lot of times by being focused on something that will actually satisfy a craving or a treat helps you pass on things that might come up during the week that are mindless and things that don't actually do it for you. So I love the intention behind it because it's still like a positive spin on it and something that you're honoring what you really want or want to enjoy. So I like to do on Saturday morning, it's our Sabbath, my children go to synagogue, I do not. And I am here with quiet, finally, sometimes, depending on which kids go. And I say, I'm going to have my coffee. Everyone lo- knows me for coffee time moments. I'm on TikTok now, very active at Nourished by Beth. And I share my coffee time mornings. It's my moment. And I Saturday mornings, I also have a treat. I have a treat of whatever I want it to be, whether it's a quote unquote clean treat or a literal brownie from a restaurant or a bakery. It's irrelevant to me. Again, that's all the same category to me. It's all a mindful treat. It's a choice. And it's whatever does it for me. Not one is good or bad on the areas of nutritional information. That's not the point and the goal of why I'm treating myself. I'm treating myself to satisfy something in me that's not necessarily about the diet and the nutrition facts. And that's okay, guys. So I have that moment, whatever it is. And I I love it. I love it. And you could hear it in my voice. And if you're watching on YouTube, go on our Beth Warren Nutrition channel or Secrets to Mindful Health. And you can see that I'm smiling right now because that is my most favorite moment of the week. I will do anything for it. I look forward to it. And it's exciting. On the flip side, sometimes things come up in the week and, and you absolutely can have flexibility and feel flexible if you can and don't need as much structure, which I uh, fully endorse. That if something does come up on the week and your child says on a Thursday night or you go on a date night and you guys are going for ice cream. okay, so make a decision in that moment, a mindful decision. Say, you know what? I want to enjoy this moment with my husband, with my friend, and I want to go and I want to have a normal ice cream. I'm not going to sit there being what's the fat free ice cream kitty size. I want whatever size is meaningful to you. And in a way that then allows you to feel so good in it and so good in the moment that first of all, you categorize it and remember it, right? A lot of times when you shame something and you want to forget it quickly and eat quickly, because you don't want to be doing this right now in a sense of shame and judging yourself, that's not a memorable food experience, right? That's the entire opposite. And that's not satisfying that craving. And that's not helping you learn how to have a mindful treat and sustain your weight. So you want to have the moment and be like, oh, well, this feels really good right now. I'm going to like bask in it. I'm actually going to slow it down in my brain. I'm going to like enjoy every spoonful of it. I used to have a friend like that and who literally enjoyed, you still had like obsessing over each bite of ice cream. It was like the best thing in the world. I'm thinking even when I'm pregnant, like with one of my six kids and food just tastes so good. I don't know if anyone who is pregnant relates, but things that when you really wanted them are like the best in the world. That's how those moments should be. And that's what helps you move forward. I don't even want to say move on. It just helps you move forward. Like you just, okay, fine. That was it. We go home, we go to sleep, we wake up the next day, normal, have my breakfast, have my salad. It's not a thought. It's just automatic. It's automatic. That That is what we're saying the balance is. So number four leads into that about being in the moment, no rush and just breathe. Okay. This also is helping you in those moments. This isn't just about basking in the moments like I was saying step three was I'm saying that you should breathe in the moments that you might feel overwhelmed or because sometimes things feel familiar, right? You're saying that you, we don't know how to have a mindful treat. So, okay, the cake is served. What happens now? Like your, your instinct, because that's, what's familiar is to feel anxious. So trying to slow down the moment sounds funny because time just passes, but slow down the moment in however way you need to do for yourself is what you need to do. So sometimes you can just be in yourself for a second and look like you zoned out. That's fine. And breathe. If that doesn't work, you can literally get up, go use the bathroom. Okay. Or even wash your face. If you don't have to use the bathroom or step outside. I want to make a huge point here that I don't care what it looks like to anybody else. I care what it looks like to yourself. I care what you're doing for you. You have to get over how you look to everybody else. Nobody else is living your life. No one else is feeling the way you are feeling in that moment. You need to do what you need to do to help yourself unapologetically. And that's in so many areas of life that I've had to learn through age and experience. This is about you. 
So if people are like, why are you going to the bathroom again? Because you just went, but you didn't realize the cake was then being taken out and you need another moment to yourself. Guess what? You don't have to answer. Or you can say something like, why are you asking me that question? Why are you so interested that I'm getting up again? Or you could just leave. Okay. This is about you. So you need to do whatever you need to do to slow down the moment. So you feel a sense of equilibrium and less anxiousness to then make a mindful decision. Do not feel pressure to succumb to the moment when you can do what you need to do to slow down the moment. I play softball amongst my many other talents and sports in the summer. And I and other players, you have the ability that when you step up to bat, to step out of the batting box and take as much time as you need to recalibrate and then step back in the box and get the pitch. You cannot stay in the box and expect to take a moment. You have to make a move and step out of the box in order to have your moment. But that's taking care of you. Of course, even I feel pressured like, oh, we're all trying to get home. Softball is a few hours. Like, let me just get the next pitch. And then you're crappy at the pitch and you let yourself down. You let your team down. You didn't do anything good for anyone anyway. Because also the reality is, is if you're sitting at the table in that anxious state, you're not having a normal conversation. You're probably getting amped up anyway. Everyone's pissing you off and it's not a good situation regardless. So take care of you first. That's the point. And my next step five is that stop caring what everybody else thinks and do what you need to do for yourself. And I love how all my steps are flowing into each other that we don't even have to go into it more than that. But that is the point is that stop caring about everyone else and do what you need to do for yourself in these moments. Because if you don't do it for yourself, no one else is going to do it. You're going to feel crappy for it. And guess what? The people that you thought you were helping by not making it a thing for yourself, you actually aren't. And they're kind of hating it right now. Right. And then number six is like, is what I'm going to finalize this talk with, which is no matter what happens, just move on. A moment, a moment, and God willing, your whole life does not dictate your life. It even says like with diabetes or blood sugar or whatever, like having one spoon of sugar is not the problem. It's where you decide to take it from there. So you didn't do as great. You could have done great. I mean, I'm all about introspection and self-reflection in a functional way. Like I do like to look back on things or discuss it with clients and follow-ups that I like to have weekly, ideally, because I do like to address things that have come up in an acute moment so that we can hit it nail on the head and remember it in its entirety and then move forward and learn and figure out how to move forward together. But whatever that is, the, the direction you move forward in is what dictates your sustainability, your ability to be around mindful treats and how to, uh, you know, be able to be around this environment. So your your actions after the fact are the most important part, the most the important part than the moment itself, because it's about the long term success. And that's my point to you today is that any weight and wellness journey is about sustainability, the ability to carry it forward, the ability to feel positive and actually enjoy the life in front of you in the present present moment, being very present in it, not feeling like, oh, I just need to do this diet so I could like move on from my, from this stage that I'm in now. It's the opposite. It's like, I'm going to go on this weight loss journey in order to move forward in a way where I learn a lot more about myself and I want to actually be in this moment and I want to stay in this moment and I want to evolve uh, but not forget this moment. I want to bring it along with me. And that's our goals here. And that's the secrets to mindful health are these back behind the scenes things that we need to do uh, in order to get not only the results we want now, but in the ones moving forward. Don't forget to tune in for more episodes on Spotify and be sure to follow us on TikTok at Instagram at Nourished by Beth for more wellness ideas. Mm-hmm.